Well, hey everybody, uh, happy Wednesday. Welcome back to another weekly video uh, here at Child Care Success Tools. Uh, before we jump right in, I am going to, actually I'm not gonna do any checking, so I'm just hoping that you guys can hear me, you can see me okay. I was definitely trying try to, was trying to get in here before the weather started. So right now, um, we are, they are calling for some, some weather going on here today. And so anyway, uh, wanted to jump in here before that happened. Hopefully I don't have any kind of connection issues for that. Happy Halloween to everybody. I am going to say a special prayer for you guys that are already, that you already have your daycare business going because I know the kids are loaded, going to be loaded up with candy and energy today. And, uh, anyway, I'm, Definitely going to be saying a special prayer for you guys. Uh, my little one, we did a trunk or treat last night because once again, today it's supposed to be like storming. We're under a, a flood flash warning or watch or something like that. And so we did a trunk or treat last night with her. And you know what, you guys, this is kind of my first time. Hi, Kimberly. Thank you so much for letting me know you can hear and see me okay. Hi, Charity. How are you? Yes, as you guys are coming in, please um, make sure that you like, comment, um, do something uh, because, you know, as I always have to go over, but Facebook's algorithm only is going to show you uh, things that you are interested in. And the only way that you're going to be able to train the algorithm to do that is that, uh, especially for my videos, you need to like love, share, comment. So when you come in, uh, say something, uh, say hello. Let me know where you're coming in from. Uh, hi, Natasha. Good morning. Um, you are so welcome. Thank you so much, Natasha, for just being here. Um, I appreciate you all so, so much. And I'm going to get into my story today. Um, anyway, I was talking about the trunk or treat. So anyway, I was about the kids with the candy. Let me, let me get off the, let me, let me, let me tell this little story here, and then we'll jump in as we're just kind of waiting for people to come on in here. Uh, but yeah, last night, so my daughter is three. For anybody, if you're new to me, um, I have a three-year-old. We have a three-year-old. And uh, and I think that this kind of like was my, I guess, first time or her first time in really doing the trick-or-treating. And she's really at a stage now where she is just, I mean, she's just something else, y'all. That's all I can say. <laughs> She is a mini me, basically. So um, very independent. Once you, you know, once she wants things her way, okay. I have to, I have to admit that that's me. <laughs> I gotta have things my way. Um, but uh, you know, obviously now as an adult, you know, you 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 take that. I've, I've learned to take that, and that's really helped me in business, which we're gonna be talking about today. But anyway, y'all. So we was in the McDonald's line, you know, because after we did all that, it's like you know we're. We're just going to go through here really quick. And she wants chicken nuggets. And so anyway, I told her no more candy. I was like, no, that is it. And I mean, she is throwing a fit in the back. You know, I mean, the the um, the uh, lady at the uh, thing majig, you know, at McDonald's couldn't hear us. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. So this is what we've got to deal with the next few days with all this candy in the house. So anyway, saying a prayer to uh, all of you out there that are going to be dealing with kids day with that, moms, dads, you guys, listen, we've got this, but um, I am hot in that candy. Uh, you know, I'm going to give her a few days on it and it is going up or I'm going to throw it in the trash. So <laughs> anyway, glad to see y'all here. Okay, so before we get started, uh, first of all, what we're going to be talking about today is my story, how I started my daycare business within three months. Um, I'm also going to just tell my story, just the whole story. So even how I started my daycare business um, within three months, and then I'm going to actually go into how I started this business. Um, this is a question that I get asked all the time, and um, I know there's a, a lot of you out there that that uh, you know want to uh, get into this, or you have you you're interested in it. Okay, it's, you there's a curiosity, and so I am just going to share my story, and I I really just want it to motivate. I really want it to be like a motivational thing for you. I want it to encourage you and, and I hope that it inspires somebody out there, inspires you to just go after your dreams um, and just do it. Just do it. Okay. So anyway, hi, Don, Donette, Di, Don Yetta. I am so sorry, honey, if I just tore your name up, but y'all, I don't have my glasses in. Um, okay. Uh, hi, Jamika. How are you? I'm so glad. I didn't know if y'all was going to show up or not because I'm thinking y'all were going to be with the kids with Halloween. So, okay, well, let's jump in then before 
they wake up, right? Because I know some of y'all, um, it's nap time. Okay, so for anybody that is new to Child Care Success Tools, my name is Ashley Benz. Um, hang on, it's my head being cut off because that's not going to happen in this video. Okay, my name is Ashley Benz. I am a Child Care Business Strategizer and Mindset Mentor. Um, and uh, I am the founder and creator of ChildCareSuccessTools.com, which is the number one online platform for child care business automation. Um, who I help and uh, basically is I help owners or those that are trying to get started. So if you're trying to get your daycare business started or maybe you are already running a home daycare business and you're trying to expand, um, I help you go through that whole process, making sure that you lay that. What's most important is that financial foundation. Um, and then then we go into child care business automation. Um, which is where, you know, I help you basically be able to set up uh, automated systems in your daycare business that run in the background of your daycare business so that you can have a life because I did not have a life when I ran my daycare business. Um, most owners that I talk to don't have a life. Everybody's working all these crazy hours for no reason. And, um, you know, there's a, a, an easier way of doing it. There's a more uh, systematic way of doing uh, running a daycare business. And so anyway, that is what I do. I love what I do. That I can tell you. I absolutely love this. And, um, you know, it's just a blessing. That's all I can say. So, okay. Um, I do want to tell you really quickly that this video is sponsored by our How to Get Started Academy, which we are so excited about. Um, you guys, the wait list is just, every time I look at it, it just shoots right up. Like, I, I don't even look at the wait list, like how many people's on it. I will maybe every other day or something like that. And every time I come back in, it, it's it just, it's up there. So um, there's a lot of people that are on the wait list and we are so excited about the How to Get Started Academy. Um, now, I will tell you that basically uh, what the wait list is, it's, it's pretty much, it's just you raising your hand and saying that you are interested, that you want to know uh, when the Academy doors open, you want to know all the details about it and all those good things. We are hoping and praying that we're going to have this thing open within the next four weeks. And so we're going to do like early bird within the next four weeks. And then six weeks is when it will open up to the, the general public. So if you get on the wait list, you are considered VIP and everything will be opened up to you first. And then those that aren't on the wait list um, you know, we'll do that probably in six weeks. So the benefit of being on the wait list, number one, is that you get to stay in the loop of what's going on behind the scenes with what we're doing. Number two is that you are considered VIP. And so whenever we do open, if there's any um, early bird enrollment specials, deals, uh, anything like that, you are going to be notified first of all that information. So um, that's just what the wait list is. So if you're not on the wait list, I really, really, really encourage you to get on the wait list. Now, who it's actually for is if you are trying to start your daycare business um, and you want to do it without a loan, you want to do it with little to no money. So maybe you are somebody that you don't really have a lot of money to get started. And I'm going to be sharing a little bit about how I got started with no money today. Um, but maybe you're somebody that, you know, money's tight, but you still want to do this thing. Like you still want to do it. You want to start it. You want to just get in some kind of way. Um, this is for you. If you are already in business and you are a home daycare business or you are a center business and you are wanting to expand again without little, without a loan or little to money or whatever the case is there, this is the program for you guys. Okay. So hi, Melissa. I am so glad that y'all are here. Um, okay. Yes. Um, Donietta, uh, the wait list, so just for everybody that's wondering how do you get on the wait list, uh, after this video, um, in the comments below, if you're watching from Facebook, it will be there, and also in um, YouTube, if you're on YouTube, uh, in the description box. Now, if you are on Facebook, or just however, I can tell you the quickest way to get over to the wait list, if you go, actually, if you're on Facebook, right above, like, um, like right our, what is it, the cover page? There is a button that says either sign up or something like that. If you click on that button, it's going to take you directly over there. I don't know if you guys can see me, but this is the actual page behind us. So, okay. Um, I think I covered all of that. Uh, okay. Oh, also, I want to say this too because I've been having a lot of people ask me about the whole automation, child care business automation. So, if you are already in business and you're 
having you're struggling with running your business or whatever the case is there you're working a lot of hours or whatever um we are going to be keeping our seven day um child care business automation academy free trial open until the how to get started academy doors open um so that is still available i will leave the link below there get in there and and it will walk you through automation okay so i've had some people ask me can you explain more about that just get in the seven day trial and you'll actually get to get inside of the academy where I teach every piece of automation of child care business automation in there. Um, and you can try that out for seven days. And um, and then, like I said, all the information is in there. So, OK, got to go over all that preliminary things, you guys, as you're joining, come in and say hello so that you are training the uh, Facebook's algorithm to um, make sure that you can see my videos. Uh, before we jump right in, I want to invite you to share, like, and love, okay? Once again, you're training Facebook's algorithm, and you're telling the Facebook's algorithm that you want to see my stuff. So if you can uh, give me some hearts and some thumbs up, and be sure that you share this out to anybody that you think this would be beneficial to, that would be awesome. Now, I um, want to share this. You guys, I've been doing this, and I love doing right before I jump into a video, but I, I either will share either a testimony or just a message that I've gotten from somebody. Hi, Tyra. Hello. Um, and, uh, you know, I was talking to somebody the other day, locally, like somebody here in town. And, uh, you know, whenever I get the question of what do I do, it's kind of confusing to explain what I do. So I usually will just say, oh, you know, I just, I have an online business or I am a YouTuber, you know, depending on like if it's somebody younger, they get that. Um, and so anyway, I was talking to this person. It was just kind of explaining what I did. And, uh, you know, I was telling her that I work with people all over the world. Um, and every time I say that, you know, it just reminds me that I actually do work with people all over the world and I meet people everywhere. And it's just a blessing to be able to just be able to reach that many people. So this is one, and I always, I'm always, i always like interested as far as where people are from. And so this is one that I thought was really, really neat. I, have, I never thought um, or didn't even know that I would have somebody uh, watching me from Ireland. So I do want to give a shout out to Sleepy Hollow Group in North Ireland. And um, they sent me an Instagram message. This was actually back in September. And she says, hi, as the owner of a small chain of child care settings in North Ireland, I uh, just wanted to reach out and say how impressed I am by your current, by your content on Instagram. Happy to be a new follower. So a shout out to uh, Sleepy Hollows Group. They are a small chain there in North Ireland. You guys are doing an amazing job. Um, and I just think it's so neat that, you know, the child care success tools, this community is such a diverse group of people, um, and we're from all over the world. So anyway, um, all right, so let me jump into my story, how I started my daycare business within three months. And I'm going to share this thing with you guys, and I've shared this before, but I don't think I've shared it on you or watching you guys here, um, or if you're on YouTube, by the way, if you are on YouTube, please be sure to like and subscribe. Um, you guys know how to do all that stuff, but we've got to say that, okay? So be sure that you like and subscribe and um, hit that little bell for notifications. All right, we're going to jump in. Y'all ready? Okay, so here, I got my notes here, but I, it's my story, so I don't have to have notes for this. Um, there are some things I want to point out, so I do want to make sure. Okay, so um, back in May of 2005, I, well, before that, I previously worked for other um, child care programs in my area. So not a lot of them, but I work for some different uh, daycare centers. And so anyway, um, back in May of 2005, I uh, got hired at a child care program and I was a preschool teacher. I was like, in my I was like 20, I think. Um, I was a preschool teacher and I worked with the older kids. So like it was after school and it was summertime. It was the summer of 2005 in May. And I remember setting in the classroom it was summer so you know I work with the um the school age children basically and um you know during nap time we would just pop on a movie you know they would get on their mats but you know they didn't have to go to sleep it was just kind of a hangout session for them and so anyway I remember very 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 clearly I was sitting there and I was like Ashley you know you could probably do this yourself right well kind of what led up to all that was that the child care program that I worked at had horrible management. The director did not know how to direct. Um, I mean, I, and I'm talking about, guys, listen, y'all. You know, we're talking about like housewives stuff, 
I mean, on the just just ridiculous stuff. Okay, just ridiculous stuff going on in a daycare program, and um, and so anyway, there was talk of this director either leaving or getting another job. I don't know what it was, but anyway, there was talk of it. So, um, so one of the coworkers there, one of my the teachers I work with, she was like, Ashley, you should really take that position if she leaves. And I was just like, you know what? I don't know if I want to do that. I, I just don't know, you know. And so anyway, long story short about all that, um, I guess maybe that that seed was planted right then and there. And um, I was like, you know what? No, I don't think that I would want to be a director of this program, but I think I want to do my own thing. OK, um, hi, Shavonda. Welcome. So May of 2005, um, I remember very clearly it was the kids were napping. Uh, we had the TVs on and I was sitting there and I was just like, Ashley, just figure out what you need to do. Like, take that first step. Right. Just what is it that I need to do? I didn't know what to do. Um, so I went home, I Googled, and then obviously, you know, it popped up to say, hey, if you want to start your a daycare business or whatever, then you want to contact the state and get your licensing packet. Now, back then, I think it's still licensing packet state. So, um, so I ordered the packet. It came in the mail, and I started reading through everything that I need to do. Now, I'm not going to tell anybody to do this, but this is what I did. <laughs> So over that summer, okay, we're talking about May, over that summer, during that time, um, you know, I would look at the packet, you know, I would try to get myself familiarized with what was going on or how I was supposed to do everything. And that's what I did during that time. So I was kind of working on my daycare business during that time at a daycare business I worked at. Now, um, you know, this was like I said, once this daycare program was not managed. So, I mean, you know, obviously... If she was managing it, she would have came by and probably got on me about that. But she didn't care what I was. She didn't care what anybody was doing during that time. Um, so I said, you know what? Well, I'm not going to sit here and just pill, pill around. I'm going to actually be productive. Okay. So that was May of 2005. Um, September. Was it September of? No, 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 no. Um, not September. The Memorial Day weekend. Memorial Day weekend of that May of 2005. Um, I stayed home and I worked on my parent handbook. Okay. So I, my mom, I remember she was like, Ashley, you're going to come over, you know, we're doing hamburgers and hot dogs and all that good stuff. And I was like, I'm going to, I'll be over there, but I'm working on my parent handbook. Okay. Cause I know that was part of the packet and things like that. Hi, Kim. Um, okay. So I did all that stuff. You guys went through the process. Now I, at that time I lived by myself. So I had my own apartment. You know, I was in that stage of life where you're doing, trying to do your own thing. And, uh, and, and so anyway, I wrote my parent handbook. I went through all the things I was going through all the packeting, doing what I need to do. Well, I didn't have a location. So I remember talking to my mom and I told her that I wanted to open up a daycare business. And so we talked about it and she was like, well, Ashley, and, and you guys, my parents are so, like, I love them to death. Um, I was 21 and I started this thing and they allowed me to use a room in their house to open my daycare business in. And so, um, my mom and my dad was all for it. They was like, you know, yeah, I mean, if you want to use this room here, we're not using it. Um, you know, go for it. Right. So I was just so blessed that they allowed me to do that. We lived in the home. So, and all that. So I moved back home. I went through that process, moved back home. And uh, with my parents, and we started my day. I started my daycare business in one room um, of our house, and um, and that. So okay, so May, so May, June, July. I spent all that time. I spent about three. You might as well say June and July, kind of, because May I was more like planning, and then when July the summer hit, um, and we just started working on getting everything ready for licensing to come down. Okay, so we took about two months. Uh, the room, we gutted the room, we painted it. It was, we just pretty much made it into a classroom. It was like a, now they call them bonus rooms. Back in the day, I grew up in the 80s, so it's, it's, they were called dens, okay? <laughs> but anyway, it was just an added room that my parents had added on. Um, it was the room that we, you know, watched TV in when we were kids. We played in, um, you know, all of our holidays were done in that room. Uh, my mom actually turned it into a dining room at one point, so it was like a large dining room area. So that room, uh, you know, just I had so many memories as a child in that room. Uh, so anyway, we did all that whole process. And then I called the state. 
they came down in August, um, maybe the end of July, I believe. And then they they ran through everything and they had to come back. Um, we had to get some, uh, what was it? The fence. I remember that. Oh, how could I not forget the fence? So we had to put a fence up, a six foot tall fence in the backyard. Um, there was just some other little things that had to be done, you know, just some minor things. And so we worked. And I remember my dad, me and my dad, um, dig out like a sod. Well, the way that, the way that it was is that when you come in the back fence, it was in the back of the house. So it had its own entry, but we, my dad, you know, he was like, well, we really want to make this thing nice. And so me and him, I remember we dug out uh, a little sidewalk. We went to Lowe's. I mean, like y'all, we, we, you talking about sweat. We did, you know, what is it? The blood, tear, sweat. We put a lot into it to get it open, but it wasn't like a whole lot of money, you know, because we did the work ourselves and we just kind of literally just kind of made it look nice. You know, we painted the room, we turned it into a classroom. I went to a parent teacher store, got the stuff for the walls, you know, made it kid friendly, all that good stuff. So anyway, um, August of 2005, August the 5th of 2005, I, my doors opened. Um, okay. Now fast forward now. Well, first of all, let me explain where did I get my kids from? Well, church. Um, I had at that time, there was, uh, two families that needed child care. Of course, they kind of, you know, people knew what I was doing a little bit, just the, you know, people that were close to me. And, um, and so anyway, I started out with three children in that little room. Um, and that's kind of how that started. So then I started advertising the old fashioned way back. This is 2005. So I put ads in the country peddler, you know, I'm advertising that way. And, um, friends of mine that I went to high school with, you know, found out what I was doing. They had children. It just was kind of word of mouth, um, a little bit of advertising, you know, and that kind of thing. And that's how I got started. And then after, let's see, um, so the three kids started from church. Okay. Then it was like, okay, they left, uh, you know, that they left. I think, uh, one of the little boys was going off to kindergarten and the other two, the mom went back home to stay at home with her kids. So then I had to start from scratch. That to me was the scariest moment because it's easy to start out with people that you know, but it's really hard to start with people that you don't know. Like, you know, like you're trying to find people. And that was really scary. But, you know, I just said, well, you know what? I'm just going to do a little, uh, oh, you know, back in the day, like I said, the newspaper, Country Peddler. And um, I remember there was this mom that moved to Bowling Green to go to uh, the university here from New Jersey. And she found me through the Country Peddler. And uh, she brought her child to me. And that's kind of how that got started. So anyway, let me fast forward. So in... um. Where am I at in my little timeline, y'all? Oh, so, okay. So then it just started to grow, right? So now I um, got this room and I had like six children in it. I had, um, I think I had one infant that I worked with. Um, maybe there was two infants and then I had the other four children, okay? So it's like preschool kids. So my sister came in and helped me, Denisha, who I think is watching. And uh, anyway, she started helping me. So, you know, we kind of made it, it was a family thing. And we just kind of worked. I mean, like in that stage, I was just work. I was just in the work mode. I was just trying to run the day-to-day -day aspects of running a daycare business, right? Um, so then it just started to grow. I mean, you know, people started hearing about me and, and I was having to turn people down and I hated that. You know, I didn't want to turn people down. So in um, 2007, we decided as a family, now mind you, you know, at this point, I'm like 22 or 23. Still, we're still all living there. Um, we decided over a weekend that we were going to move out. We were going to find a place to rent. Yes, you guys. Yes, we moved out of the, my home. It was my childhood home that I grew up in. Um, you know, we decided as a family, we were just going to go find somewhere to rent because I was just, you know, we, we were turning people down. And, you know, business-wise, on a business standpoint, it's, you know, it was, it was pointless for us to do that. So, um, as a family, we, we moved out. We just, we found a, a nice little home that we rented. And, um, and then that's kind of when everything just kind of started to blow up. Okay. Uh, because at that point, then I had the more space. Um, and so then I went from six to 12 children, a license type two here in Kentucky. Uh, and then by 2007, we turned that whole thing into um, a little small private child care program. Okay, so it's kind of private um, and that kind of thing. 
So that is like how I started. And that's how I did it within three months. Now, um, it to me, as, as I look back, I don't know. I was just in a different kind of mindset, I think, than where most people are. And this is where this is where I want you to be if you're trying to get started, okay? Just don't overthink the process. Just don't overthink it, you guys. This idea came to me in May of 2005. Prob well, probably a little bit before that because, like I said, when that seed was dropped. But in May of 2005, this idea came to me. And in August, I was open. You know, and it wasn't, I wasn't trying to like, and then honestly, like my vision at that point was not to be a center. I just wanted to help people and I wanted to help families because the program that I was in was not. And that kind of where, where, where my passion was really at was management because the management in that daycare program was a hot mess. I mean, we're, we're talking about teachers arguing and having yelling matches in the classroom in front of children and i'm i'm thinking is this normal you know and i'm thinking this can't be um and then when parents leave their back for that to be going on in a daycare business was unacceptable totally unacceptable and as a director i am thinking why are you not getting rid of these people like seriously why are you even allowing a yelling match between two teachers to go on in front of children in the, I mean, these people, like, they were acting like they was at home, literally. And I'm thinking, you know what? No. And I'm sitting here thinking to myself, I can do much better. Like, I can do, I can open up a program and do better than that. And so that's what I did. So, um, you know, uh, moving, kind of transitioning myself into what I'm doing now, because I get this question asked a lot. I'm, like, I'm going to answer the question. Um of course, I ran my daycare business, you guys, for 10 years. So I did that for 10 years. And you guys that know, or have heard my story, how I fell into this whole child care business automation stuff. And it literally came from just, I mean, you can't run a business and not be able to work on it. You, it's just not going to happen. And I knew that. And there was a moment where I felt trapped and I felt like, you know, I can't do this. And then it, and then it would go back to what I came from. It it went back to, you know, what I saw happening in other child care in the, you know, the child care program that I worked at, the daycare center. And I'm thinking, Ashley, now listen, you're growing, you're starting to get where you have to get staff in. Um I mean, like literally you're doing it all. And I said, if you don't get a hold of this, what what you saw um, and how you saw that director running her daycare program, that's what's going to happen to you. You're going to be having all kinds of stuff going on up in here. And I said, I can't do that. So that's when, um, and then plus it was stressing out my family. Um, you know, me and my husband, we could not, we were, we were not able to get pregnant. Just, it just was not what I envisioned a business to be. So then I, you know, we discovered child care business automation and um, that really, change everything. I mean, within two years of us putting that in, I got pregnant. So that's at least how much I can tell you that it it is it's life changing. Um okay, so anyway, eight the eighth year that I was in business, you guys, um, and this is gonna you guys I've and I've told this story, but I haven't told it here on uh live on Facebook or I haven't told it on YouTube for those that watch it on YouTube. So um uh, the eighth year that I was in business, I was sitting in my office one day and um, just something came over me. And if I, I can, if I, I can, I can even feel that today. And it was what it told me was that I was not supposed to be there. I was just, I was not supposed to be there. And so when I, when I felt that and I was just like, okay, that's kind of strange because in my mind, I was going to be that little old lady that was going to be walking, even though my kids was running, or whoever, family might have been running it, or somebody was else going to be running it, but I was going to be that little old lady that was going to be coming in at 75 and 80 and still trying to manage my daycare program. That was going to be me, okay? So for something to come on me like that, to tell me that I was not supposed to be there, I didn't really know what to do with that. So what I did was I sat with it for two years. 
And um, I'm going to tell you what the vision was, okay? So I had this vision. And when I say vision, you guys, I'm not saying that I looked up in the sky and I saw some, you know, images. But I think you know what I'm saying when I say a vision. Like I, there was this idea that popped in my head. And the idea said that I was going to be over a group of people and I was going to be helping them. Um, and they were directors and I was going to be helping them, um, um, you know, put these systems and these, uh, these automated systems in their daycare businesses, right? Or in the, in the daycare. So we took that because I, I, I talked to my, I talked to my husband about it. We took that as if, okay, Ashley, this is, you're supposed to be expanding. You were supposed to be expanding. So we started that route. Um, so we had, we, um, I, we had our daughter. And right after she was born, I, you know, um, actually before when I was pregnant with her, we were already in the process of expanding. Uh, we were looking at locations. We got with our realtor. Like we were in that stage. So um, I remember telling my, I was like, I remember telling my realtor, I was like, look, let me have this baby. Let me do that. And then I am going to call you as soon as I get home and get settled with her. So, um, so, you know, I had Nova and then uh, three weeks after I had her, we were back with the realtor again. We were back looking at locations like we were in that spot um, and in that space. And, you know, we just kept hitting these walls. It just, it just, I mean, you know, we say walls, I mean, just a, just a lot of stuff, just stuff, you know, location wasn't right or it was just something, it was something that was blocking. And so the difference for me, because, you know, you're when you're in business, you're going to always hit walls. The walls are there. They're always there. Um, but for me, there's two different kind of walls. There's the wall that is just like, okay, Ashley, you just need to come up with a solution. There's a solution to break to, to you know break this wall down. And then there's another wall that's like, no, this is God. And God is this is God's wall, and He's telling you, you're not coming this way. I, you're I'm I've got something else for you. And so when we kind of kept hitting that, I knew and I was like, oh, this is not. This is, this is God. This is not, this is something that we are not, like, I don't have any control over. Okay. Um, so anyway, I, um, I told Victor and I was just like, it's just not right. Something's off. You know, it's just, and of course, you know, everybody, when you're pregnant, they tell you that, you know, oh, well, as soon as you have your baby, like, you know, everything becomes clear. Like you see things more clearly. And I never understood that until obviously I had her. So hi, Gail. How are you? Um, so, okay. So we were in the 10th, the 10th year. We had all the, the automation was in place. Things were kind of starting to run like you can, they were starting to run a whole lot. I mean, obviously they had to because I was a new mom. The, those stuff I was doing before could not do that. That type of a lifestyle was not fit for a family. There was no way that I could work those hours, that I could be, you know, doing the things that I was doing and then try to be a mom and a wife and run a household. It just, just was not going to work. Okay. So, um, hi, Rashonda. Hi, Lori. Y'all come on in. So anyway, Okay, so I, me and Victor, we talked about it. And of course, you know, I sat with it for two years. And Victor was just like, Ashley, he said, you're going to have to just close it down. He said, you know, it, you know, and I, I couldn't understand. I, I could not. Because I told Victor, I was like, you know what? But we, like, where we're at right now at the day, it's, it's, it's running the way that it should. Like, we have a well oiled machine right now, Right. And he was like, yeah, but you keep, you're tugging with this thing. And he was just like, it's something, it's God is telling you something else. And so that was so hard for me to hear. And you guys kind of met Victor um, here uh, not too long ago in the video that we did together. So hi, Fator. Hi, Monique. Hi, hi, you guys. Uh, thank you for joining. Um, it was really hard to hear. And Victor was the one that he had to, as a husband, you know, um, Victor, you guys, is just this, I mean, he is, that is my God. And I love him to the moon and back. And, um, you know, he's not one of these husbands that's, you know, got like rule with the iron fist. And Victor is, I mean, you, you guys met him in that video, but he is so like caring and he's so supportive of what I do. Um, and he will jump on any train that I decide that we need to jump on as a family or in business or anything like that. And so anyway, um, 
he was like, but this is one time he put his foot down and he'd never done that before. And I remember we had been married um, almost, what, eight years, I guess at that, at that point, seven, maybe seven years at that point. Um, he had never done that before as a husband, you know, I mean, I've seen him do it in other areas. Like if we're like out buying furniture and stuff like that, you know, he's got that attitude, that negotiation. He's like, no, we're walking away. But as a husband, so when he did that, I knew that he was serious. And I obviously I knew he had my best interest at heart, but it was hard for me to accept that. It was hard for me to accept that, you know, um, that chapter of my life was over. And that something, there was something else out there for me to do. Um, and this was all God, you guys. So, like, I mean, just, just I don't have anything to do with any of this. And I, and I tell people that if, I, if I've ever talked to you personally, you probably heard me say that. I don't have anything to do with child care success tools. I am just a steward over it. Um, this is just God, you know, this is, this is all him. This is his thing. So, um, I'm just a steward over it. But anyway, so, uh, we closed it. And it's crazy that I'm doing this video. You guys, I did not plan this at all. But we closed it. Um, it'll be three years today. Yes, it was Halloween of 2015. We shut it down. That's weird that I'm doing this video today. I didn't even have this plan. Like, did not have this plan at all. Um, but three years today, we shut it down. Um, so, when that happened, and I remember the day that we had our final staff meeting, I called it an emergency staff meeting. Um, and I hated that because at that point I was like, I've got the best team right now. Like these are the people that's going to take my business to the next level. Um, you know, this is the group. Why is this happening? So I remember we got in the car, you know, I came, well, the daycare, I left at 3.30. The um, staff meeting was going to be at 6. Came home, got Nova, you guys. I'm in that breastfeeding stage. You know, I'm, I'm all, hormones are all over the place. Um, you know, and so we got in the car, we were driving over there and I'm going over, I'm rehearsing in my head, like the spill, right? Because literally you're telling people that, you know, today's their last day or well, actually we didn't close it. Uh, we ran it for another couple of weeks um, was what it was. But anyway, that's when, uh, no, no, wait, 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 wait. Two weeks prior to today is when I told the, the staff today was the day three years ago that I actually shut it down, um, October 31. Um, anyway, got in the meeting. I could not finish the sentence. Victor had to finish the sentence for me that, that, um, we were going to be closing down Ashley Angels. Um, hi, Tony. Okay. You guys, listen, I have a parent of mine that is joining me right now live. And she brought her daughter to my daycare program. And she says, so glad Jalen had the opportunity to go to your center while it was open. Thank you so much, Tawny. Um, that is just amazing that you're here. I really appreciate that, you guys. So, Lori N says, this is what God wants you to do. Okay, yes. So, anyway, um, y'all, that was so hard. And it was a family-owned and operated business. Um, so literally, it was a death in our family. That's what happened. We were grieving as a family. Um, and so, um, I'm going to start tearing up if I go, if I go that deep into it. But anyway... We were, we grieved. It was so hard. You guys, this is my childhood home. We grew up in, we, you know, we had so many memories there growing up as a family. We had memories there running it as a business, as a daycare program. We had kids come through. Uh, I saw one of my kids yesterday at a trunk and trunk or treat. And I mean, you know, I mean, he was a little bitty thing and now he's like up here, but just, it was hard. It was so difficult. So fast forward. Um, how did I get here in this place? Um, well, at that point, you know, I just became a stay-at-home mom, um, you know, and that's just kind of what I was doing at that point. Uh, I didn't really know what I was going to be doing after that, but I did know that I wanted to still stay in the in the industry, in the child care, um, early childhood field, and in the, the child care business industry. And so anyway... Um, so I'm just sitting here, you guys, here, you know, I'm running my little home with Nova, like my daycare program. We had, I did circle time with her, you know, we had a little schedule. That was a huge transition for me because I was used to getting up and running a business every day. And then to kind of go in and be a stay at home mom was another thing. So um, I actually had parents ask me, well, would you be willing, like, can I bring my child to you? Would you be willing to do it in your home? 
Um, I had people from the community that I didn't even know knew that I run a daycare business. I had somebody contact me on Facebook and she was like, I just had a child. I was going to bring her to your business and I checked in your clothes. Can, are you, what are you doing? Are you still watching kids? Whatever. So, and I was just like, you know what? I just, that doesn't feel, that doesn't feel like what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, so, uh, Victor was just like, well, Ashley, just get on YouTube. Just like get on YouTube and just maybe do a couple of videos and share what you, what share, share your stuff. And I was like, Victor, I said, now I don't think so. <laughs> okay. Um, I was like, I love watch. I, look, y'all, I am a YouTuber. I love watching YouTube videos. Y'all, I have my vloggers that I follow and all that good stuff. And so I was just like, now I don't want to do that. I am naturally an introvert. So if you, I prefer smaller settings. I prefer, you know, like I'm not one, I don't like to be on a big stage. That's not me. Um, you know, I can do public speaking, you know, I ran a daycare, you know, I got in front of people, but I prefer not to be in the spotlight. Okay. I prefer to just kind of, you know, I don't know. Anyway, that's just, that's me. Um, let's see. Rashonda says, I hope my up coming business be as successful. Oh, well, it will be, Rashonda. If you put the right things in place, honey, you'll be fine, um, which is what I'm going to share in a minute. But um, so anyway, so, okay, so I'm sitting here. I'm the stay-at-home mom now. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to get on YouTube. And you know what? Most likely, nobody's going to find it. Nobody's going to see it anyway. Um, and if I just help one person, that's great. You know, at least it may give me somebody to talk to. I don't know. You know, I'm sitting here and I'm needing that adult interaction <laughs> because I'm here with her all day um, and things like that. And so I did that. I popped on YouTube um, and within a year, uh, the video that I did, which I'm going to redo that because when I, when I did that video, uh, I was kind of nervous. If you guys go back and watch, it's kind of embarrassing uh, and I thought about taking it down, but I'm like, no, I'm going to leave it because it's good information. And so anyway, I um, did that video and within a year it got 20,000 views and then I had a thousand subscribers. So that's when I knew that there is a need out there. People need help. And I didn't realize that people need it. I knew I needed help when I ran my daycare business, but I didn't realize that it was that. I didn't, I didn't realize that. Like I was totally, I mean, just like blindsided that that there was a need out there for people to get started and for people to learn how to run their daycare programs in a successful manner um and so anyway that's just how I got here you know so I always just say that it was just God and I think that um have you ever heard that saying where success is where um opportunity meets um prepared or preparedness meets opportunity well, I ran my daycare business for 10 years and I, you, you guys, it was a lot of work. Um, it was just, y'all know that you, y'all that are running ones, you already know how much work it is. Um, but it was a lot of work and there was days where I just, just, I don't even know how, looking back, I don't even know how I did it. I, I don't, I don't know. And it was just great. God was all up in that. Cause there was just, he, I mean, he was, um, but, you know, uh, you know, I always just say that, you know, I just, God put me here 10 years. I, I did that for 10 years and I went through everything I went through so that I could help others. And so, um, it, you know, when I look back and I think about that, it was not in vain, but at the time when I closed it down and we were going through that, I just was like that, I just felt like I did it in vain, you know? Um, although I was helping children and families, but it, you know, you, that like literally you guys, and you all know this, but when you run a business, and for those of you that are getting started, it is like a birthing a child. So, you know, to have that in your mind. Now, in my mind at that point, I am, I did not think I was successful at it. I didn't, I'm thinking, you know, hey, you know, we closed it down because I just, something just was not right. And I took it as a failure. I took it as a failure, but it, it wasn't a failure. Um, and, you know, it was just, God just shifted me and I just kind of stepped up, stepped out on faith. So what I want to share with you or where I, where I, what I want you to take away from all of this is number one, do not be afraid. I started y'all my daycare business within three months. So for those of you that are trying to get started, 
just do it, okay? I am telling you, you can do this. Just do it. Do not overthink it. Just do it. Take the step. Whatever that, if you've got that packet, um, hang on, you I just, I'm getting a phone call and a Facebook log. Okay. Um, if you've got that packet in your hand, just take every, whatever they tell you to just do it and just take step by step. Do not overcomplicate this whole thing. Um, but what I was going to go, where I was going back with is that the, the, there's a quote that says success is when preparedness meets opportunity. The 10 years I was in business prepared me. Um, there was a gap. And I will say this too, which I'm going to, uh, for those of you that are getting started or if you're already in business, there was a gap in this industry um, online. Okay. And I, you know, I came in and I saw when you guys started talking to me and I started really understanding where you were coming from, which related to me um, with what I dealt with. I saw exactly where the gap was and I filled that. Okay. And I delivered. You guys asked and I delivered. And so, um, and I, I will do that. That, you know, I was talking to my, uh, my private coaching clients yesterday and I was telling them that, you know, this is my job. I take it very seriously. And so any, anything that I do, anything that I say, anything, if I talk to somebody, if I sense, if you send me a message and I respond back to you, I take everything very seriously because I understand that when you are dealing with somebody's business, you are dealing with their life. And that I take very seriously. And so I never want to come on here and give out misinformation or say any, you know what I'm saying? Like say anything that is going to steer somebody in the wrong direction or give any uh, any advice that is not wise or anything like that. Because like I said, when you're dealing with somebody's business, you were dealing with their life, you guys. And so I take it very seriously. But, um, but to, you know, at the end of the day, I'm just grateful to be here. And I know that this has been a question you guys have been asking. Uh, I got a, a question that came through yesterday and they was just like, you know, how, how did you start this? And they, you know, everybody's curious. So I just want to answer the question. Um, but this is, I didn't start anything. This is not me. This is God. And I'm just a steward over it. So that's usually what I tell people. But I will tell you this. In your daycare business, if you can fill a gap, you will be successful. And I promise you that. So here's what I want you to take away from this as you start your daycare business or if you are already running your daycare business. Let me, let me talk to those that are starting. So if you're starting your daycare business, here's what I want you to do. I want you to look around in your community and you need to understand where the gap is. Where is the gap? You need to fill that. Now, I'm not saying just a normal, oh, you know, uh, there needs to be quality programs. Well, what is not quality that's causing a gap in your area that needs to be filled? You figure that out and you deliver that to that community. If you find out what the gap is, because here's the thing about it. Your job, any business owner's job, is to solve solutions. Your job is to solve a problem, okay? That is your job. If you can solve a problem, then you will be successful at any business venture that you do. I know some of you all do other stuff. You solve that problem, you will be successful at it. So you need to find out what is the problem in your area. Now, we all know that it's, okay, so let me put you like this. As far as, um, you know, just providing child care, well, that problem's already been solved, okay? That was solved back in the 80s when whoever decided to open up an actual building out, because whoever started this, the child care industry started in their home, and so that that was that's already been solved. So you're going to have to dig a little bit deeper to find out where is the gap in this community. You fill that gap, you'll be successful, okay? You'll be the talk of the town. Now, for those of you that are already in business, you're the same same way. What I want you to do is I want you to make sure that you are filling whatever gap is going on in the in the in your area. Look at what you're doing. Look at what the yeah, this is gonna require some market research. It's gonna require you to go in and investigate and find out what other people are doing. Yeah, you're gonna have to do that. That's part of being a business owner, okay? Um, but if you can find the gap, you will be successful. And that is honestly what I have learned in business in general. 
um, with with Ashley Angels, which was which was my program, the gap that I filled was the personalization, the um, customer service. You know, really, really making my daycare program um, be a place that people and families felt like they were not the only one. And you know. And they, everybody, I don't care what business you're in, but when you got a customer that comes in there, at that moment, they they should feel like they are they are the only one there. And that's what I did. That was kind of my specialty. And then, of course, you know, just making sure that we, the automation, the child care business automation, running it like a true business. And so people would see that. You guys, I served um, people from India, um, doctors and lawyers and teachers and all that. And I never dreamed that I would have those kind of clients in my business. I never dreamed of that. Um, but, you know, a lot of it is that that was what was the gap in my area. It was just a lack of customer service. It was a lack of making sure that you, when a family comes in the door, spend time with them, spend a couple minutes with them every day if they, you know, if they need that. Whatever the case is, there you guys. That was a gap in my in, in in this area here, and I filled that gap. Um, I think in this industry, in the online space, I think that for me as a child care business owner, um, you know, because I did the same thing you guys did, searching for help online, looking for somebody to help, and things like that. I feel that the gap was for me at least, just coming from my as a daycare business owner. Um, just the um, once again personalization you know it was that's just what i lacked and um you know for me personally i need that i need to i need to be able to talk to you i need to be able to you know have access to you if you're coaching me i have to have that because if i don't have that i don't i'm you know i'm not i'm not going to feel like i'm going to be able to get benefit from whatever you do um it's funny because me and my coach were actually having a conversation yesterday about all this. And um, we were talking about that. The fact that, you know, in, in any business, the more that you can make it personal, the more that you can, you're, it's people. So you have to connect with people. You have to do that. You've got to connect with families. You've got to connect with, and not just on a, you know, just a in and out kind of thing. Because I get that, you know, they come, the parents come in, they come out. Um, but People just want it to be, they just want to be treated like people. That's all. That's all that people are asking for. And if you can do that, um, you will be very successful. So, okay, we've got Tawny says, oh, Tawny, okay, she's on here. So once again, you guys, if you're joining or whatever, but Tawny is a, um, she used to bring her daughter to me um, at my program. And she says that I looked at so many daycares before bringing um, Jalen to you. And I truly believe that is why we chose you. You filled that gap, girl. Thank you so much, Tawny. Oh, I'm so glad that you're on here. You're sharing this with everybody. Thank you, Tawny, for that. Um, but yeah, you know, that's just what it's about. At the end of the day, you are working with people's children. And you've got to take that seriously. Um, you know, I'm a mom now. And, you know, I mean, y'all listen. You know, I think every mother out there you know, listen, we will do what we need to do for our children. And if somebody mistreated my child, just Lord help us all. That's all I could say. You know what I'm saying? And this is where, um, for me, that's kind of where it all got started. Because I would, I worked in a daycare program and they were not doing what they should have been doing. Okay. And I'm thinking, no, this is, this is wrong. I mean, for a parent to leave, to shut the door and they're going off to their job thinking that their child is in a safe environment. And I said, this is wrong. And I did not want to be a part of any of that. So, um, yeah, at the end of the day, you guys, that's just what it's all about. It's all it's just about helping people doing what you love to do. Uh, you know, um, right now we are dealing with uh, we're, we're in this whole stage of uh, moving. And it's just been a mess. Selling a house, trying to buy a new one. Um. And I found that even in real estate, you know, you just got a lot of people out there doing things they don't, they need to be doing something different. I don't care what industry that you're in. I don't care what you do. You, If you are not out for the best interest of that person that you are dealing with at that particular moment, whether they're your client or not your client, whether they're just asking you a question or inquiring 
or they, they, they want to work with you, whatever the case is there, they want to sign their children up with you. If you don't have their best interest at heart, you guys, don't do it. Just do. And I know some of y'all working full-time jobs. I know that, you know, obviously you guys want to start your daycare programs. Just don't do it. There are some people that just need to do something else because they just, they're not doing their jobs. That's just it. So, okay. Hi, Leah. Okay, y'all. Listen, um, that is all I have for today. I really appreciate you guys being here. I really appreciate you. Um, basically, this is your platform. Uh, once again, I just, God is just a steward. I mean, he just put me a steward over it. And I, like I said, I take it very seriously every day. Um, but I'm so thankful because without you guys, there would be no, um, there would be no me getting up here doing uh, Facebook Live. So I'm going to be here as long as you guys are here. Uh, but, uh, you know, I just appreciate you all. I'm here to help you in any way that I can. And I really hope that this story, that my story inspired you. And I, what I really want you to take away from it is, number one, fill that gap, whatever that is. And number two... Don't be afraid. Just do, just get out there and do it. Okay. Just don't, you got to go. You got to step out on faith. You just got to do it. Don't, you don't need to know all the answers to every detail of it. You don't have to have that. Usually what happens if you step, make this step here, then usually the next step always comes. Whatever's next for you to do as far as like how you're going to work your business and get it started will come to you. But we are here, especially me and Victor are here now to help you if you don't want to do it by yourself, okay? If you don't want to do this thing alone, okay? So, um, hi, Toy and Fatora. Okay, you guys, listen. I hope you guys have a great Halloween. It's supposed to rain here. Uh, so, I don't even know if we're going to get to be able to do any trick-or-treating. I don't know. We probably shouldn't because she's got plenty of candy as it is. Um, and like I said, she threw a fit, y'all, the other yesterday when I told her no more candy. So, anyway, you guys, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate you all. Um, have a great rest of your week. I will be back here if the Lord's will next Wednesday between 11 a.m. and 12 p.m. Central Standard Time. Um, and as always, thank you. Oh, I got to leave the virtual goodie back. So below, down below the video, I'm going to leave the wait list to the How to Get Started Academy. I'm also going to leave the link to the, um, the seven-day free trial for those of you that are wanting to know about automation. And also, be sure that you join me in our private Facebook group. You guys, that thing grows every single day. So be sure that you join us over there. Um, we It's just a community of us who are all in this thing together. Uh, we're trying to learn. You know, everybody in there is trying to learn child care based automation or how to get started. And um, once again, I'm just a steward over that. So anyway, thank you so much again. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.